A useful new feature of Cubase 7 is the chord track. And because I find it's a useful function, because it can help in song composition, I'll look at setting it up here. And I'll give you a quick overview of how to get started with it. So, here's an empty project first of all. And what we need to do to start off is we need to add a chord track by right-clicking anywhere here and choosing Add Chord Track. Now, this chord track in itself doesn't generate sound on its own. It needs to be linked to a VSTI. So let's now set up an instrument track by right-clicking and choosing Add Instrument Track. And from here, I'll choose Steinberg, Synth, and I'll go for Halion Sonic SE. But of course, you can choose any VSTI. And then hit Add Track. Now, you'll want to choose a suitable preset. I'm going to choose a piano for its simplicity. I'll click here to choose this piano, and then click on the cross to close Halion Sonic SE from view. Just out of habit, I'll give Halion Sonic SE an image. I'll choose a piano, and OK it. Now this isn't necessary, as I say, it's just out of habit, now that I've been using Cubase 7 for a while. From this stage, there's one more thing to do. We need to get Halion Sonic SE and our chord track talking to each other i.e. they need to be linked together so that chord track drives our piano preset that we just set up in Halion Sonic SE. And we do it by clicking here on the chord track and choosing Halion Sonic SE. In this case it's 01. We might have had three or four instances of Halion Sonic running. Then, so that we can monitor our playback sound, I'll click here to activate the Halion Sonic SE monitor button. Incidentally, it's important this button on the chord track is activated too. Right, we're all set up. Next then, on our chord track, let's add some chord placeholders ready for us to add chord shapes in a moment. I'll choose my draw tool by right clicking and selecting it. Then I just need to click where I'd like my chords to be placed. I'll start here and add four chords in total at each bar and then deselect by clicking here. The next step is to double click on your first chord to open up our chord track editor. Now you'll see it's split into two. We'll get to the chord assistant later. Let's stay with the editor initially. I'll choose C major as my first chord. And then I'll move to my second chord by double clicking it and choosing G major. For my third chord, I'll choose A initially, but I want to make it A minor. I don't want it to be A major. And then I'll go back to G major for my last chord. Let's hear this simple sequence played back. I'll go to the start and hit play. Here goes. OK, that works well enough. Now I want to add another four bars but with a slightly adjusted chord progression. So I'll move my right locator along by another four bars and I'll add in another four chords in our chord track. This time, however, here's a tip. Rather than adding four blank chords initially, you can double click on our last chord to call up the editor once more and click on this button down in the bottom right. And one of our blank chord X's is added to the chord track and I can choose a chord again from here. I'll start with C major once more, then I'll click this button again, and instead of choosing G as my second chord, I'll choose E minor. So I'll first select E, then move here and modify this E so that it plays back as E minor. Again, I'll click to add another blank chord, and then I'll choose F initially, but I want it to be a major seventh, so I need to click to make it an F major seventh chord. However, if you click here, you'll get a natural F7 rather than an F major 7th chord. So let's change that. I'll double click on the wrongly chosen F7 and change it from here to the option below. This now makes it the F major 7th chord that I wanted. And you'll see the name updated here to indicate this choice. Finally, then I'll resolve back to G major. I'll click here and choose G major. Right, let's hear this back. I'll go to the start and click play again. Great stuff, a nice enough progression. But that's me knowing what chords I want. 
What do I do to have the Cubase 7 chord track suggest chords for me? Well, if I decide this second G major needs changing, I'll double click it to open it and move to our second tab, this chord assistant I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial. And initially you'll see some suggestions of chords that you can audition based on this G major chord. At present, we see these three suggestions. But if you move your complexity option here to the right, and I'll choose the far right button, number 7, then you'll see even further more complex chord suggestions. I'll just scroll to the top, and I'll work my way halfway down and choose B diminished. This instantly substitutes our G major for B diminished. So, let me go to the start again and hear this back with our new substituted chord. Here goes. Do you like it? I think I do. Maybe not at the first pass of our chord progression, but possibly at the third pass or the fourth pass. And therefore, you can see how we can easily build up a song structure. OK, now we'll finish up here for this tutorial. In all honesty, there's quite a lot more we could talk about with the chord track. But for this Groove 3 Tips and Tricks course, we'll leave that for a different volume. OK, right then, as I say, we'll finish up here and I'll see you in a moment.